some of us do well in exams and some of us you know struggle with exams right there is someone who can teach you these skills what do you think happened in the 2013 to 2019 time frame why did we stick to that problem we both of us um, would take up classes uh, from 2 am to 4 am in the night um, and i remember uh, you know you would travel like 40 to 60 kilometers one way to just make sure that the college has projectors and speakers there is a gap in what industries want and what universities teach in india the gap is a lot right the education system has not changed hey guys this is surya from skilling and i'm sarang so this video is about how skilling started how we have traveled over the period of time and where we are going and uh, let me let me start with my background i'm a mechanical engineer i did my undergrad at st joseph's engineering college in chennai and uh, post undergrad i got into cts uh, like every mechanical engineering does but i did not want to spend my time in cts because i actually loved mechanical engineering and i wanted to create a career in mechanical engineering and that's when i realized there's a, a possibility to do my masters i went on to do my masters at university of wisconsin madison and uh, that's essentially the place where we realized um what we learned at undergrad was very theoretical and what say a grad school or at a work you need is the practical application of theory right uh, say for example uh, one of the courses that i took in my first semester is heat transfer and it is one of the toughest course that i have taken in my academic career uh, but it was one of the course where i learned the most right and especially because i had to use tools like matlab engineering equation solver python in order to solve uh, my homework problems but i did not know any of these tools i learned i, I knew the theory but no idea on these tools so I had to put in a lot of effort to understand these tools and uh, go from that right and uh, post my post my grad school at uh, uw madison i went on to work for cummins as a product development engineer i worked on something called crankcase ventilation at cummins and uh, uh three years at cummins was one of the best time in my professional career where i learned so much things right one of the things that i learned there as well is theory only helps you to understand a few concepts but it does not allow you to solve problems the ability to solve problem comes with your ability to understand how to implement theory using a computational tool to solve practical problems right and, and that's where we realized the problem that we have at undergrad and uh, that's uh, that's my side of the story of why we started skilling uh, you know just like surya said i'm also a mechanical engineer i did my bachelor's in mechanical engineering at uh, alagapachetar college of engineering technology uh, in karaikudi and uh, once uh, i finished my undergrad I, you know i was able to get uh, you know a job offer at uh, cts just like surya and also one offer at robert bosch but then uh, a few of uh, my friends were doing masters uh, they were planning to do their masters at that point and that inspired me as well and i was fortunate enough to get into the university of wisconsin madison uh, at that point i was extremely interested in internal combustion engines and uh, i was fortunate enough to get into a lab called as the engine research center at the at the university of wisconsin madison and i think uh, just like what surya mentioned uh, a lot of things changed regarding how uh, you know engineering is actually pursued uh, you know in uh, countries outside india uh, what, the key difference was you know uh, we were extremely good at theory uh, i still remember in a lot of classes i used to answer a lot of questions but then when the professor would slap us with a homework where we have to build a simulator in matlab uh, we would spend hours and hours to essentially even do basic st uh, stuff in programming and uh, the first semester especially was very hard because you know three subjects that we would actually uh, take in our masters would be equivalent to say six undergraduate subjects in terms of effort so it was very hard uh, a lot of uh, time was spent during the weekends learning the fundamentals of programming and after one semester both i and surya felt like you know we were able to cope up with uh, you know the way the curriculum is structured right and i think that was essentially the one of the starting points of skilling we realized that a lot of our junior students who were joining later and who also came as part of uh, you know an exchange program 
had the same issue they were very good in doing pen and paper calculations and uh, applying their theoretical knowledge but in, when it comes to using say software programs say matlab or python to build some of the simulators uh, you know they had a extremely hard time and uh, once we felt like this problem was there we felt that you know we needed to create a solution for it because you know it was a personal pain point at that point and if we had a solution like this it would not only just benefit our juniors but it would also benefit a whole lot of people that actually pursue engineering and that's kind of the reason why uh, surya and i decided to start skilling one of the things that i saw uh, sarang doing was a lot of uh, students would essentially learn from sarang right uh, he was really good at matlab he was really good at a few fundamentals and marrying these two things was the difficult part for for us as junior so sarang was one year senior to me and that's something that sarang did really well and um, that's i think the uh, birth of the story right like uh, okay there is someone who can teach you these skills this is not something that you need to learn by all by yourself and there is someone who can teach you these skills and if someone is interested in teaching you uh, these skills that would be a great opportunity for you to learn right and that's how we thought about it one one thing i i think that was different in uh, the us curriculum was the importance of projects right like every week we had a project or an assignment and uh, a project or an assignment is not something like what you uh, do in india right like in say the aspect of project itself there are only one project in the whole four years of engineering in undergrad uh, in the us it's like every semester yeah i mean so you know one of the fundamental differences was how the um, curriculum was structured some of us do well in exams and some of us you know struggle with exams right uh, essentially finishing up something in 3 hours however if you take a look at real world engineering problems the the pressure is not to do something in 3 or 4 hours the idea is to keep innovating it and keep iterating right and i think that's why you know there were some of some courses where uh, the grades were based on how well you did in this projects which you know you have to work uh, on say anywhere between 80 to 200 hours so it gives you a lot of time to continuously iterate on designs which at the end of the day is what engineering is all about and i think that bringing that piece into courses that can be consumed by students is kind of the product idea that we initially had exactly so courses industry relevant projects embedded in your coursework and uh, think about say if you are taking a course that is 6 months long if you do one project every week right think about uh, you are essentially doing at least 25 to 30 projects and that's the whole thought process right that's the way we thought about uh solving this problem and we started very small like we started early in 2014 and um we while we were still working right we were still working i was working at cummins sarang was working at convergent science uh we had our own day jobs in the us and we will kind of uh meet every evening and try to solve this problem right like we we used to kind of build courses speak to colleges in india and see how we can essentially add value right and um in 2014 2015 we did a lot and uh, we actually reached out to 12 to 15 colleges who were essentially providing their students to learn these courses through skype uh in 2016 we decided that uh, we we had something very very unique uh, we believe that this opportunity of teaching engineers the right skill set uh we were only focused on mechanical engineering at that point in time uh teaching engineers the right skill set is a problem to be solved and which was not being solved in engineering for the last two decades right we wanted to solve that and and that's how we quit our jobs moved back to india and uh uh 2016 2017 we tried out different business models 2018 and 19 is when we realized uh pre-recorded coursework with live support sessions where each course has a multitude of projects where students can work on projects every week and create a portfolio of projects right uh, that essentially is the key product uh, we realized in uh, 2018 2019 we essentially just executed 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 and uh, 2019 is when we got into y combinator as well uh w- one of the things that i wanted to speak with charan and ask his thoughts as well right like uh, 
in this in this time frame right uh, say for example 2016 i quit my job uh, sarang was supporting from the us uh, and uh, uh, so we are two founders just two of us working at different locations and we kept on going right um, and uh, how, how was it like what what kept us motivated why why do you think we started in 2013 and uh, people will know about skillink right now but 2013 to 2021 is like 8 years and uh, so let's say 2019 was our break breakout point with y combinator and so on what do you think happened in the 2013 to 2019 time frame why did we stick to that problem okay um so i think primarily because uh, you know it, it was it's a true pain point and i think that's something that we uh, thought about every day um so i i forgot to talk about the company that you know i, I used to work for it's it's called as convergence science Uh, so it's a company that develops um, uh, computational fluid dynamics and combustion software for solving hard problems, uh, right? So uh, the company was started by ex, uh, you know, University of Wisconsin Madison PhD uh, people, uh, basically alumni, and they were very very smart. And one of the things that those guys would be able to do is, you know, they would be able to, you know, they started convergence science uh, because, uh, you know. they felt like uh, there was a there, there needs to be a better product to go ahead and uh, to basically to do uh, ic engine simulations right and uh, you know one of the things that they would tell us you know they just kept on going for a lot of time and uh, for us and the reason why they did that is because they really believed in that pain point and i think what, thinking backwards uh, that one of the main reasons that i think we both stuck to solving this problem is because i think it's a problem that we truly believe in right it's it's not just a business opportunity i think more than a, more than being a business i think it's a problem that we wanted to solve and i think that's one of the reasons why for all those six universities i think we both of us um, would take up classes uh, from 2 am to 4 am in the night um, and i remember uh, you know you would travel like 40 to 60 kilometers one way to just make sure that the college has projectors and speakers and we did this for 6 uh, months without getting paid yeah yeah uh, and this is like 2017 i think uh so people who know chennai uh so there was velamal engineering college there was ssn college like two ends of chennai right like both i think 150 kilometers in between or 100 or 150 kilometers um i we used to have a 8 am or a 8:30 am class at velamal where essentially since it was just two of us sarang was in the us teaching the class i was here setting up the classes right uh, i used to go to velamal and uh, set up the infrastructure so and then finish the class and go to uh, ssn at 2 o'clock set up the class and and it would be 4 in the night for sarang and and we did that like and we enjoyed doing that right like uh, now if you ask us i don't know if we would do that uh, we enjoyed doing that very very personally because we thought that we had this unique opportunity to change uh the way people learned engineering and nobody gave us that opportunity right like uh, uh i i got 70 75 percentage in undergrad right like there was a huge number of people in my college who would have done what uh i asked them to do right uh and uh, i thought that i let them down by not guiding them to do the right thing because i did not know how, what to what the right thing was and that was a very personal pain point when i was working at comments when i saw my peers not succeeding as well as uh i thought they would succeed uh, and they had the caliber right they did not have the exposure and i was the lucky one who got that exposure now and when we when i quit back to from the us and moved back to india um at that point in time money was not a motivating factor and because there was no money out there uh, and we just went and did things the reason for going online actually stems from the fact that you know um, i think universities uh, prepare for something different and what we wanted to do was something different so we wanted to teach uh, students things that an engineer in an actual company is working on today and i think that's very important for us and what we actually did, did is we took this simple principle and we looked at what are the jobs that are actually out there and then figured out what are the courses that are required for it and i think the most important piece is generating this industry relevant content by partnering with subject matter experts uh you know right now we work close to say anywhere between 800 to 1000 industry experts uh, not just in india but across the globe who teach 
classes who basically do these recordings for us and uh, you know we are also able to customize this content based upon the jobs that are there uh, uh, in that particular region so one of the exciting things is you know i think 20% of our users are international and it has been that way right from beginning uh, why because i think if you take this problem statement i i don't think this is an india specific problem this is something that uh, you know people in the us in the uk and other developed countries also face which is you want to make sure that uh, whatever you learn in the university is relevant to the jobs that are actually available in that particular region and i think we have had people uh, you know some some people who have actually pursued their masters in the us who who were able to actually get you know full time jobs based on the courses that they have learned from skilling i think i think right now we have around 65 countries from which our users come from uh and then the fact is very simple right uh there is a gap in what industries want and what universities teach in in probably the western nations that gap is a little uh, lesser but in india the gap is a lot right the education system has not changed at all over the last two decades and people who come out of engineering are unemployable and that's that's been spoken about very very widely but nobody has taken a uh, effort to solve that how do you solve right everybody is saying industry uh, industry and academia does not match so the only way to solve is essentially get people in the industry come teach you things that's the only way you solve now I, we cannot go and ask them to quit and come and teach because what will happen is after a point in time the information that they know will become irrelevant because in 3 years time the industry would have moved and that's why so this is we did not take up online because it was sexy we took up online because that was the only way we would be able to connect the gap between industry and academia right and uh, uh, and, and 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 this becomes very very important right now especially in the age that we are in uh, we believe that the next two decades will be transformational in automotive ve- uh, electric vehicles uh, infrastructure and even the uh, information technology right um, if you think about 2000 2010s it was about uh, innovation in electric vehicle uh, they create a technology that can essentially uh, alternate fuels uh, fuels like gasoline right but 2020 and 2020 30 and 40 will be about adapting that technology right uh, while tesla and other companies are uh, are st- spoken a lot it still only captures say 1 to 2 percentage of the whole vehicle market probably and now think about it we are speaking every government in the uh, world is speaking about transitioning to electric and if you thinking about it you need so many engineers in embedded systems uh mechanical transportation systems electrical uh, uh, integration between electrical and mechanical systems computer science to kind of build this product which is essentially electric vehicles same with infrastructure especially in a country like india where you have more than a billion people your infrastructure uh, essentially needs to be better so that it can accommodate people and give a better lifestyle right and you need to have better infrastructure and you are seeing a lot of metro cities come uh drainage systems will become better roads will be uh, better over the next two decades and who builds that the civil engineers build that electrical mechanical engineers contribute that right and and computer science becomes an integral part in integrating every aspect of it in order to kind of move it forward nobody in the world cares about this as much as we do at skilling and and while it might be a bold statement the reason we say that is nobody has built what we have built and that's why we have seen every every country in the world essentially has a skilling student right now um or probably every major country in the world has a skilling student right now and that's what we are very very uh, excited about what we are building over the next 2 uh, 3 years why did we even do that like we we started applying for y combinator in 2014 and uh, we kept on going getting into y combinator was not the objective applying for y combinator was the objective they felt like we were approaching the problem the right way yeah. and also maybe applied too many times so they almost felt like they needed to just talk to us to see if we are yeah. actually crazy or not we are raised 17 and a half million dollars or roughly 130 crores